Hello everybody, welcome back to the Country Living Homestead. Today we are going to be unboxing and doing a review of the Earthway Precision Garden Cedar. Stay tuned! Now, we actually decided on the Earthway, number one, because there was a lot of great reviews about this garden cedar. And uh, I was actually very happy with all the different discs that are available with it. Um, it. It actually allows you to do a whole variety of seeds. And just uh, it's just a matter of switching the disc. And the price was actually very good on this as well. And, you know, by the time we're, we're done with this video, if you decide that this is something that's right for you, uh, we will drop a link down below. So be sure to check that out. And uh, then you can get your own Earthway Garden Cedar. So let's get to unboxing this and see what's in here. So the first thing that I'm noticing, I was a little bit surprised on the actual size of the box. I was expecting probably something a little bit larger. Um, but, you know, hey, I, I guess they want to package everything. So I'm assuming that there's going to be some assembly involved. Um, but uh, we'll, ha we'll have to see how that goes. But I was a little surprised on the overall size of the box. So that's that's to start with. So let's, let's get this thing open. Now, as I'm looking at the box, I'm actually seeing that it shows the assembly instructions right here. So I'm wondering if there's even going to be an instruction manual in here with it. I would assume, just to try to you know tell you how to install the different discs, I would have probably just a, a thought, but... Uh, it is showing how to assemble it right here on the box. So let's get this open and see what it looks like. Just gonna start sliding things out of here. Okay, we got that piece and actually it feels like it's made out of aluminum, so that's actually going to work out really well, like especially if this unit gets wet. I don't see it rusting very easily, so that's, that's nice. And now it also looks like the whole entire frame is all aluminum, but there's the, the wheel part to the unit. That's plastic. And the wheel is a plastic as well. It does feel like it's a pretty durable plastic for the wheel. I guess it, as far as the molding goes, it, it does feel like it's pretty sturdy. This plastic container here does say Earthway there on the sides, you can see. And that, uh, that feels like a pretty thick plastic as well. And this looks like the, the little plow on it. That's aluminum. Nice little edge there for that. But yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. What else do we got in here? That looks like we got another wheel for the back. And this looks like the handle. Now, one of the main reasons why we went with a cedar this year was because we've got a pretty large garden. And normally it was taking us between three and four days to actually see the entire garden. Now, by the time that we started getting the seeds in, now the weeds were starting to attack the garden. So it was just a, it was a bad circle of events that was going on. So it was making it very difficult for us to actually plant the garden and beat the weeds. So we decided to go with this option and hopefully this is actually gonna make things a lot easier and faster. And another great thing about this, um, I know when we were planting seeds, it's very hard on the back. So you're constantly reaching down, you're planting a seed, and it's just repetitive all day long. And that's pretty hard on the back. And this is actually going to be a great option, which is going to prevent us from bending down all the time. And giving us that opportunity to well, definitely save our back and save a lot of time. So, now in this package, it looks like we've got 
the seed discs and some hardware. So let's open this up. So it looks like we've got a total of seven, seven different seed discs that came along with this cedar. So, and I'll get, kind of give you an idea as to what these discs are used for. So, this first disc looks like it says tomatoes, onions, lettuce, cabbage, turnips, carrots, endive. So, that's the first disc. Now, if you take a look at the overall design of this disc, you can kind of see how it actually works. So, when this is turning, What's happening is it's grabbing a seed out of this little container here. So, and then what it does, it's spaced. So each seed gets grabbed in those little tiny little holes right there. And it'll grab a seed and plant it. Grab a seed, plant it. Grab a seed, plant it. So that's actually going to make your lines extremely perfect as you're planting these seeds it's going to give the appropriate spacing for these types of seeds which is pretty awesome now this disc looks like it is for beets okra and swiss chard so again same concept you can kind of see where all the small holes are for the seeds to actually get grabbed by as this wheel is turning this one is for beans and small peas. So there's another disc. This one is for radishes, leeks, asparagus, and spinach. So there's that. Oh, here's a biggie. Sweet corn. So this looks like it's a disc that's specifically made for sweet corn. And I know when we were planting sweet corn, you could never get the rows nice and even. And there were times where we were getting, you know, sweet corn here and then right next to it would be another one. So this is actually going to help with that a lot. So that's an actual sweet corn disc, specifically only for sweet corn. So that's pretty cool. And this is for peas. Okay, so this actually looks like it's specifically made for peas because it does say jumbo peas, early June peas, and that's... That's a pretty neat little disc there as well. Oh, wow. I guess I didn't even know this came with it, but it's a hemp seed disc. And so, wow, it only has one area to grab a seed. So I'm assuming when you're planting hemp, it's going to give you a wider area from between seeds. So that's, that's pretty cool too. So we've got this plastic piece. I have no idea what this is for yet, but we'll figure it out once we look at the instructions. And then we've got some standard hardware. So let's get this put together. So now that we've got this out of the box and we've got all the pieces here, uh, I was looking at the instructions and it's telling me to, I have to remove this bolt, but something that's very odd is it isn't, showing us the exact tools that you need to make this happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab my tools and I will let you know exactly what you're going to need to put this together. Okay, so I grabbed my handy dandy DeWalt Mechanics tool set. Probably one of the best investments that I ever made. And hey, if you're interested, I'll drop a link to this down below as well. So, this actually looked like it was about a half inch bolt, and I was right. So, I've got a half inch wrench, and I'm going to grab a half inch socket. And it's saying to remove this bolt to install the back wheel. So that's what we're going to do.
And I will say the back wheel is probably about the same mold as what the front is. It does feel pretty sturdy, so that's a definitely a good thing. Tighten this up. And there we go. Rear wheel is installed. I will say that the kickstand is a little weird. It, it doesn't have a lot of rigidity to it. So when you try to put the kickstand down and you try to set it so it doesn't tip over, it keeps, it keeps moving on me. So that's one thing that I've noticed. Just a small thing, but... Not a big deal. Okay, so moving on, we've got the rear wheel installed. So now we're gonna move on to step two. Step two, it's saying to install the handle. So it says remove nuts and bolts from the plastic bag. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so it is saying to remove the nuts and bolts from the plastic bag, which we've already done. And it's also saying that these are special lock nuts. A wrench will be required to remove and install them. So again, it does not tell us what size of wrench, but if it's the same as the rear wheel, which it is not, that looks to be about a 3 8 inch Nope. Seven sixteenths. So you're going to need a seven sixteenth inch wrench. Okay, so I was just a little confused as to how this was installed, but I think I'm understanding the concept now. This is going to be for the row marker, and it comes off to the side like this. And basically what happens when you're pushing this and you're seating in a current row, this is going to mark out where your next row is going to be. It looks like it is adjustable, so you can change it on the width of row that you want to plan. But now I am seeing some challenges that may come from this. And one would be any type of rocks or anything that would be in that row. It's kind of going to flop this around, or weeds. Weeds would be able to do that as well. So I do see some challenges with that, and I'm kind of wondering how that's going to work. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this installed, just so we can get it on there. And then we'll have to... So this is going to be part one of actually just putting this together. We will do a part two actual overall review of this when we, when we get a chance to use it, which uh, right now is definitely not going to happen because... We would be seating in about three feet of snow, but we certainly will do a part two just to show how this does work, but that's kind of concerning. I just don't see how that's going to have enough hold back here because it's just looks like it's going to be able to move around. So hey, we'll give it a try and see, see what happens. And another thing about this row marker is being that it's made from aluminum, just wondering if this could bend as you're using it. I'm just not so sure how durable that's going to work out. Now, something that I did also notice too, and I just noticed it, is it looks like they did not tighten this screw the whole entire way. So I'm gonna have to do that because that looks like where the seeds are going to be going down through. And as, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very loose right now because they did not put that screw in the whole way. So let's get that taken care of. There we go. And let's just double check these. Oh yeah, geez. A bunch of them weren't tight. So definitely want to check those. If you do end up going with one of these, I would certainly check those screws just to make sure that they're nice and tight because this one, it definitely wasn't. It, it was not tight, so not a big deal. We were able to get that knocked out, no problem. So let's get this put on. 
Now, one thing that's a little confusing about the instructions is it's telling me to put bolts in, but it's not telling me which bolt to put in. It doesn't have a guide for the size of the actual bolt that you're gonna be using for the step. So that's kind of weird. And there are, let's see, I do notice where some of the bolts have like a square head on them as well. I'm going to assume that's going to be for that because there is a square hole for that and it does seem to fit good. So we'll use that. But uh, I have no idea what bolt to use and where. And the instructions, they don't tell you how. So this bolt looks like it's probably going to be the correct one. That is long, but the others are all the same size. So that's got to be the right one. And is it telling us to use, use the bolt and nut? So we're going to be using a nut as well. And I need to grab a 7 16th inch wrench. Be right back. Okay, so we now have a 7 16th inch wrench. So let's get this installed. It's a very long bolt. Okay, so now it looks like you can adjust this, but just as I was mentioning earlier, is the if it only has one bolt here, my concern is this is going to be moving up and down, especially if you have this all the way out at the end, because it's just going to be able to give it the amount of force that it needs to be able to move that. So I think I see a problem with that, but... Maybe they should consider putting an extra hole in there for another bolt. Yeah, it would be an added expense, but I'm almost thinking that would be the better way to do it. Now, one of the thoughts that could be is having that single bolt will allow this to kind of float as you are making that extra row marker. But I'm not quite sure the design idea behind that. But hey, we'll have to see how it works later on. But now I'm going to take this wing nut and I'm going to put that on here because it is saying that this is the wing nut. So I'm assuming it's a wing nut to make this easier to adjust. So when you do have to adjust for your row, all you do is just loosen that wing nut and you're good to go. Okay, it's starting to look like a cedar now. Okay, now it's time to install the handle. So it looks like there are two holes in the handle here, and it looks like two holes there. So that looks like that's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. So let's get this put on. And it does look like we're back to Let's just see what size that is. Okay, that's still the 7 16 So the only half inch that you're going to need is for the rear wheel. So it's looking like everything else is 7 16 So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get these started. I'm not gonna tighten them down until I get these other bolts in place. Let's 
snug them down a little bit. That's all you need. We'll definitely go back and tighten those later. Okay, now I can give them a good tighten there. Don't over tighten them because obviously you don't want to strip out your bolts. And then snug them up. There we go. Okay, so we still got some pieces left. We got this piece of plastic. I'm not quite sure what this is for yet, but we're going to get to it but there we've got the handle installed and I'm a tall guy I'm not so sure how well this is going to work I am kind of bending over just a little bit so I don't know if there's a way to maybe maybe change the angle of that to make that a little bit higher but it's pretty close it should be about right in there but I'm probably an over tall guy so they probably wouldn't make these specifically for my use. All right, so it's saying place the row marker shaft, which we've already done. We did that. And it's saying that a cord may be tied to the handle bracket with the clip and row marker shaft for lowering and raising the row marker. Oh, okay, I see what they're saying. So essentially what you could do is you loosen this up, you can have a string attached to this to be able to raise that and lower it. Raise it, lower it. It's kind of cool, cool idea. And I'm assuming I'm not quite sure what this is for. Let's see. I will say that the instructions to install it, or actually to put this together, is not very thorough. Insert clevis pin. Okay, so I have figured out what this piece of plastic is for. So there are two holes here in the handle, and you can see there's two clips. So what happens is you actually have to squeeze that together a little bit push that on and there it looks like it's clipped now what that's for this is pretty cool is you fold this up and it latches in there so it's actually a little storage area for the row marker huh that's pretty neat all right well there you have it unboxing an assembly of the Earthway Precision Garden Seeder. Okay, so we are in no way affiliated with Earthway. We just decided to buy this product based on reviews and the cost. And overall, I'm actually pretty happy with the design, the durability, the build of the actual unit. Seems like they did a really good job. Uh, I definitely would say improve the instructions overall through the unboxing and this whole process i would definitely say improve the instructions a little bit more and other than that good to go so again we want to say thank you for stopping by the country living homestead don't forget to like comment and subscribe